Hello, plant friends. Hope you guys are all doing well. In this episode, we are going to talk about, I guess I am going to talk about the five things that I don't like about the plant community. Okay, so the so the first thing, the first thing that I don't like about the plant community, uh, especially in recent years, is, is that it seems to be um, a lot more focused on the monetary aspect of plants. So, you know, I I, I I sort of have like mixed feelings about this. On one hand, I know that plants, obviously they're getting much more expensive or they're more expensive, much, much more expensive now than they were a few years back. So, you know, with, with anything that has a lot of money attached to it, associated with it, there's, you know, there's gonna be money problems, right? More money, more money, more problems or something something like that. The good thing about that is that it has um, drawn more people, more business people into plants and that has provided probably more venues for collectors to get plants. It's probably uh, brought you know, more plants and rare plants or more uncommon plants um, to the market. It's probably increased availability. Uh, I feel like now you can pretty much find, you know, any rare plant on, you know, social media, Etsy, eBay, you know, like you can really find anything. Uh, the price, you know, you'll be paying for it, but at least now you can really find it. I think my, my biggest, my biggest, uh, qualm with with the monetary the the focus on money is that we're finding a lot more bad apples right more bad sellers i think that you know once the the quarantine pandemic covid thing you know we, we reached the sort of the tail end of that um we're gonna see this huge influx of exporters from asia who probably have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea about the plants. They have no idea about the exporting process, about packaging, about caring for the plants. Um, and I just think that they're just gonna, you know, we're gonna have this rampant thing where there's gonna be tons of them offering plants at, I guess, you know, relatively much more affordable prices than getting plants in the States. And we're just gonna have lots and lots of shipment uh, you know, horror stories or importing horror stories. The trend of, you know, bad apple sellers, it's, it's not really isolated to, you know, Asian exporters, right? I think we've definitely had a fair share of those in the U.S., um, you know, in recent years. And I think that's, you know, it's, again, it's, it's inevitable. I just think that it's a it's it's a bad part of our community and you know that's that uh, i think that sellers need to be more accountable and i think that a lot of sellers are taking a step up in accountability i think that uh, shipping processes uh, packaging processes uh, for sellers as a whole has has really really improved so i think that um you know it's it's sellers have really taken a step in the right direction, uh, mostly because of buyers and mostly because of, you know, um, eBay and PayPal policies, refund policies. Uh, so, you know, there are pressures there to um, force sellers to get better at at their process. Uh, so so I don't I don't think this whole focus on money is necessarily uh, surprising. I think it's just it's there and it's probably probably a part of you know every lucrative or potentially lucrative community you know hobby community okay my my second my second thing i hate about the plant community um this one bothers me a lot more than number one than the money part and this one is the anger uh i i mean whew, there's i feel like there's so much anger um and animosity, resentment or something um, in the plant community these days on social media. And I, I really did not see that there a couple of years ago. It, it's, I really didn't. And um, now it, it's, you know, it's, it's becoming so much that I am very hesitant to, to be involved on social media uh, because of, of that anger. And it's just, um, it's very, you know, it's, it's, it's not very welcoming. There's a lot of things happening in the world that can cause people to be very stressed, to be very angry, um, you know, to, you know, have all this pent up energy that they want to release somewhere. And it's, you know, it's, it's not uncommon that people release their pent up energy in real life. 
you know, onto online, um, you know, sources or online venues or avenues where, you know, there's less accountability. I just feel that there's a lot more anger going around people uh, more quickly to point fingers, more quickly to honk their horn or their internet digital horn, I guess, um, and, and just say, you know, or comment mean, nasty, unproductive uh, things. And I think that's been a, that's, that's probably one of the things that bothers me the most about the plant community uh, currently. I'm hoping that as, you know, the world opens up again, as the pandemic, uh, you know, goes, uh, you know, clears up, um, I'm hoping that, 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 that resolves or improves significantly. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it does. I'm, I'm hoping it does. So, right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the third thing that bothers me about the plant community is that there's there's a lot of um, I would call it like my way or the highway uh, sort of mentality that um, you know like what I'm doing is right and what you're doing is wrong uh, because it's not what I'm doing um, and and um, you know anyone who's doing things my way is you know smart or reputable or trustworthy or um, right and and if you know you guys aren't doing things my way or the person who's not doing things my way has has no idea you know what they're talking about or something I, I feel that uh, that is uh, you know I, I don't think that's but that this this number three part bothers me as much as uh, the anger part but I feel like there's a lot of this going on in the plant community I, I really think that you know we th there there needs to be more of a sense of you know, of, of openness to, to new methods, to, to new um, ideas, uh, to new ways of, uh, of doing things. I mean, you know, we, we all live in super different climates, super different environments, different setups, right? We have, you know, people with greenhouses and nurseries. We have people who live in the desert, right? We have people who grow plants just in their closet without windows or something, right? Like there's, there's you know, we all have... Uh, you know, just different planting environments. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's illogical to think that there's a one answer or one solution that, that, that fits us all. You know, that's kind of why, you know, on this channel, we, I, I really try to, you know, reach out and, and interview as, as many different people, home collectors as, as I can, just so that, you know, we can see how different people do things and, and evaluate and talk about and discuss, you know, why it works. Like, why did they choose to do it this way versus another way and, and why it works for them, right? Like, I, I think as a whole, we should all assume that we're all smart, we're all logical, right? Like we, we, we chose our methods because of a reason. We're doing the things we're doing because of a reason. And um, you know, there, that reason might be because we don't have enough experience. That reason might be because we were taught wrong or incorrectly. Um, you know, that, that's, that's true. But I, I think that there's, there's probably a lot more um, knowledge to be gained out there from different methods than to just assu to than to assume that people's doing things people are doing things differently out of ignorance. Um, I, I don't think that's a correct assumption in the plant community or or in life. I guess. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the the fourth thing, uh, my fourth thing about the plant community that I, I really don't like so much, um, sort of ties in with my number three thing. You know, our, our plant community lacks. Uh, it lacks skepticism, um, and and here here's how I'm going to explain that. As as many of you guys who follow the channel know, I I work with babies in the intensive care unit or the, the intensive care unit for babies, and um, I think you know people in medicine might be a little bit more familiar, but like we're very skeptical, right? Like if if there was a new medicine that came out, um, and you know it made rational sense in animal studies. And, um, you know, it, it helped animal babies uh, or it, like, you know, in test tubes, it did this and it was really great. And then they tested it in animals and it was like, you know, great. And, um, and then, you know, even then we're like, mm, I don't know. I don't know about that. Right. And, and then that, that medicine, you know, gets, you know, gets, uh, approved by the FDA and then it gets used on babies. And there's like a hundred babies improved this and this from this medicine. Right. A lot of us would just be like, I don't know. I'm, I'm still not convinced, right? So it's only 100 babies. 
only 100 babies. All right, and then, and then that, med that medicine or technique or, you know, whatever technology, whatever, you know, gets tested on like 1,000 babies, 10,000 babies. There's been like, you know, 20, 30, 40 papers written about how good this, this new thing is. And then, probably by then, you know, a lot more people are like, oh, I'll, I'll give it a try. Right, like I'll, you know, let's let's think about it. Let's let's think about, um, you know, how that uh, fits in, and rather, you know, just because those studies worked with their population, does it work with, you know, our babies? Does it work with um, our workflow? Right? Like, does it work with our system? Um, so, so that you know, like, so, so as you can see, there's like lots of like skepticism um, there. Okay, so let's talk about like the plant community. I feel that I feel like sometimes, uh, you know, the, like we just take advice or 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 things for like granted. I feel that I could, you know, someone can say like, oh, um, you know, carrot juice, you know, carrot juice um, improves plant growth and uh, prevents root rot, right? And then they they show this picture of um, you know their their plant that's like growing. And um, and there's no root rot. They're like, oh, I've been using carrot juice on this this plant for the last like two years, and look how great it is. You know, it's growing, it's huge, and there's no root rot, right? And and it's like, oh my god, like carrot juice, right? Prevents root rot and makes you like grow huge leaves. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my god, it's like the next big thing. And it's like we don't we don't question the the scientific basis of it, right? Like we don't ask like, well. Did, you know, would your plant have grown big and the roots have not rotted even if you didn't use carrot juice? And then we don't think about like the other things that uh, the person might be doing that might also explain why their plant is doing well. In medicine, there's like a, a sort of like a life and death sort of thing, right? There's a benefit and there's like a harm thing that, which is why we, we're, we have to be a lot more skeptic. We, right, we have to be a lot more suspicious, uh, I guess. Right, um, in in the plant world, I guess I guess there's there's not that much of a need. But you know, I think if you think about it, there is there is sort of a financial monetary loss, right? When you're trying all these new things, uh, when you're hopping on this bandwagon of whatever fertilizer or liquid or paste or gel or whatever to put on plants to improve this or that or that. Um, there is a, you know, you're, you're buying these products, right? They're, you're still investing some time, some effort to applying or mixing or doing. Uh, there, so there's still a you're still losing something. Anyways, I think that that's, okay, that's enough of a spiel there. I, I just feel that that's just like one of the things I feel that the plant community, um, we need to be, I don't know. <laughs> we have to doubt things more, doubt information um, or hearsay more than, than we currently are. All right. <laughs> my, my fifth thing, my fifth thing that I don't like about the plant community, um, I, I, I don't like the gossip. Uh, um, I, I, I do have to say that, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I do have to say that gossip is, you know, it's, it's, it's everywhere, right? Like it's, it makes the world turn. Uh, so, so it's, it's hard to have any community where groups of people gather and not have, have gossip. But I think this also like this ties into my, you know, my number two, the anger, right? I feel like, I feel like this isn't, I feel like some of this isn't like fun gossip, right? It isn't like, oh my God, did you hear that? Like, you know, so-and-so like dropped his plant and dirt got all over the floor, <laughs> right? Like it's, it's not like that, right? It's, it's like, did you hear that, you know, so-and-so did this bad thing with so-and-so behind the corner of so-and-so, right? Like it's, you know, this, this, it isn't like fun gossip. It isn't uh, harmless gossip. It's, it's, I feel like it's, um, you know, oftentimes damaging. It's, you know, it's, it's malicious gossip. Yeah, there's a lot of just gossip going around and I don't know. Um, sure, gossip about me how you want. Like, like you know, he, he probably eats his monsteras or something. You know, that's that would be fun, right? That's, that's great. <laughs> if you guys, you know, proliferate that, that I eat my monsteras, that's, that's awesome. I feel like we should think about our, the roles that we play in, in spreading gossip and whether this gossip is for fun, right? Or, um, or is the intention behind the gossip harmful, malicious? Are we trying to put others down? Are we trying to attack others? Uh, 
directly or indirectly with this gossip. Um, okay. Okay, I think I, I do have a, a bonus, um, a bonus uh, sixth, sixth uh, thing. And, uh, I, and I add this as a bonus because I'm not even, I'm not really sure. This just might be a sense that I have and it's not like a true thing. Um, but I think there's some, there's some elitism and um, uh, with that, that's, that's more pervasive now in the plant community than uh, it was before. And, um, it, you, know, I, you know, what can I say, right? Like this, this channel is about rare plants, right? <laughs> like, and oftentimes these plants are really, really expensive. So I, you know, take, take that aside. As this hobby is getting more and more expensive, as plants are getting more expensive, um, you know, there's gonna be the haves and the sort of like the have-nots, the people who can afford these insane collections and the people who sort of can't. So I guess there's a just gonna be a disparity there. Um, but but yeah, I, I feel like there's more um, showsmanship uh, or shows off uh, menship uh, these days than there used to be. Before, I felt like a lot of the plant community or more of the plant community was about sharing. And, um, you know, it's just like sharing these I love this plant. I love this plant, even though it's rare, right? That's a good way to put it. There's in the past, there's more of like, I, I love this plant, even though it's rare. But, you know, so I love it. Um, and now it's more, it seems like there's more of a, I love this plant because it's rare. That's, again, that's, I don't know if you guys are sensing it. I feel like that's something that, that I sense a little bit more. Um, I don't think it's, it's such a big thing that it's like a huge, huge problem. But I think that's something that has been has been creeping up and changing in uh, in the plant community uh, a bit. All right, guys, uh, that's gonna be it for this long winded <laughs> episode. Here, if you guys want to support the channel, uh, support it by buying a plant T-shirt or you know like, subscribe, do all the YouTube supporting things. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, comment below what what bothers you about the plant community. Um, right. Right. <laughs> Till next time. Happy planting.